remove all our cars. They're putting a new telephone pole in. I don't know if they're completely replacing the one that's there, but it's right where I parked the van. So while we're waiting for these guys to get their stuff together and get that done, I'll give you guys a little thing of what's going on on a Saturday morning here in Los Angeles. They left these at the front doors today. Uh, so now they want you to compost your food and put it in the green bins. Uh, okay. Because we all live in apartments with a ton of counter space. You know, there's just a ton of counter space here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. You know, what did this program cost? Did this program cost like a billion dollars <laughs> so that everybody can get one of these plastic bins? Probably. And I haven't looked. I'm going to guess they were made in China. I hope not. There's a lot of plastic stuff that's actually made in the USA. And there's a dirty counter here. This is out because last night I put a set of handlebars on a bicycle in the living room. I'll show that in a second. Sabo sent me this. We're going to go over this in a minute. Um, this is a... Uh, a cuff he bought, he he dyed the inside because he didn't like it because it was tan. It's one layer. It's not lined. I'm going to critique this. I might do that in this video. I might do it uh, next to mine in a separate video in a moment. Um, thought you guys might get a kick out of this. I don't think I've shown this before. It's a vintage toy collection. Part of uh, it. Just a bunch of crap. I made this little case haphazardly one day because I found the glass doors by the garbage so i uh built that for that that is a genuine kung fu grip gi joe there you, know? you don't want to mess with those because those fingers will snap off now <laughs> so yeah i found these vintage uh schwinn wide handlebars that i put on my 20 inch bike i was going to get up early this morning and go down to venice and ride that around but i'm not going to do that now you know, last night I was on the phone with Chris from uh, Chris Lehman with uh, Broadwinger Boots, guy who makes my boots. That's 90 pounds on the curl bar. I've had this curl bar since I was in high school. Bought this from my buddy Paul Muller. And uh, 90 pounds. I did four sets of 10 curls, no sweat with it. And then I did 50 push-ups, if you could believe that. I've got a time grapher uh, so I can start timing my or regulating my watches. So I'll have to get into that now. And uh, by the way, these are speakers for the front doors and a stereo for the van. And I got to put those in at some point, but I need a wiring harness, a uh, female connector that I can wire into what's under the dash so that this will just plug in. So I got to figure out which one that is uh, soon. And uh, yeah, let's keep going. Oh, I got these uh, USMC uh buttons that I want to put on that denim pullover I wear all the time and replace the army buttons. So maybe I'll put that in this video. And uh, there's the workstation for the leather work. So uh, let's just keep this video going. It's going to be an interesting Saturday morning in the uh, LA pad. The alcohol. The tip here is uh, these skewers. When you want to take the grips off your bike, uh, you can take a couple of these skewers and stick them underneath the grip create like a little pocket of space to get some alcohol in there, move the skewers around, and then twist the grips, and then eventually they'll pop right off. They will pop right off the handlebars that way. These are my, I like these Schwinn chubby grips. Uh, people will say, hey, how come you don't use a, a compressor? An air, just use an air compressor. Um, dude, I'm doing this in my living room. Don't have an air compressor in your living room. Can you imagine what that would do when it went on and shake the whole building? I'm sure that all my neighbors would love an air compressor in the living room. That's why I use the alcohol. <laughs> okay, while we're waiting for the pole to get put in, uh, here's the band that Sabo sent me. I'm going to get the calipers out. Um, I want to point a few things out about it and then uh, show you what this guy's website looks like, which is fantastic. I mean, it's beautiful looking stuff. As I was scrolling, I'm going to find the exact one that Sabo has here. You can see this one here. It's $230. But this is the one that's interesting to me because I'm going to do one the next week with red stitching. This is $360. Okay. Let's just take a look at the pictures for this. And I want you to notice in this picture, you can see that... Oh, Christ, this happens all the time. 
Um, so, all right, let's go back. So you can see that it's not lined, right? And it's, it's just thin cowhide. You'll see that in a moment when I show you the one I have in my possession. And I'm not going to knock this. this. His bands do not obviously come with a watch. Now, this is a cuff straight up. This is very similar to the cuffs I've done for myself and my brother. Again, not lined. The uh, keepers for the watch are sewn directly to the cuff uh, as well as the strap. Interesting choice to have a gap there. I wasn't doing that. You know, good, nice, neat stitching, but again, not lined, doesn't come with a watch, $360. Um, you know, that's, I, yeah, I'm a little flabbergasted by that, but good for him. But that makes me feel good about my stuff. Let me pause this for a moment, see if I can find the exact one I have in my possession. Okay, so I can't see the exact same one on his site here that uh, well actually this is very similar other than uh, you can let's just click on it this is pretty close other than the one that I have right here has the whip stitching around the perimeter these uh, keepers where the spring bars go through this is just everything's riveted so you can't adjust that and the width of this leather here is pretty thin. Uh, that looks more like an 18 or 19 millimeters wide. Uh, so that's a tiny watch. So we'll get into this deeper in a moment. Uh, yeah, this is the most similar one it looks like to me to the one I have, other than mine being black and having the... Uh, This probably should be a separate video, and maybe it will be, but I don't know. Let's just see how this goes. Let's go back to the first page in case I missed it. You can see these prices, $315, $229, $220, $230, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $240, $
right? So there's no, it's not Chicago screws. Um, yeah, you're, you're stuck right here. So right here, this length, let's just see what it says here, is precisely 35, yeah, we'll call that 38 millimeters. And so from our, I'm not going lug lug, I'm going to where, well, actually, that's pretty close to what that is there on that watch. I'm guesstimating where the actual uh, spring bar is. That's pretty close. So, you know, a decent sized watch might fit on this. The thing is, is that this is so narrow, you're going to have a gap. You're going to see your spring bar here. You see how well fitted this is? If this watch was on uh, that cuff, you'd see more of the spring bar. So that's a very bizarre choice. I don't know if uh, Sabo was aware of that when he ordered this. I know he wanted a Submariner. I don't know what the Submariner lug width is. So I don't know if that would actually fit. Sabo ended up with something like this. The only difference with his is that um, the Bund is also bison hide. On this one here, I made, I made this with a, uh, a horse hide uh, Bund with... Uh, you know, the bison hide as the, the, the pass-throughs. I added the extra stitching here because I made this wider on purpose and it's a 22 millimeter band thickness. I have one hole for myself here. I was going to make this to sell. As I was making, I wasn't happy with it. In the end, I'm very happy with it. Um, I suppose I could still sell this, but I'm wearing this as my everyday uh, for the last few days. I think this might be my beater, my official beater work watch, at least the band. Uh, this was the first one I ever did, and this is double thick um, bison hide. Keep in mind, mine are all lined. All right, that's cowhide. These are, these are all lined with cowhide. Put my logo on this one. light has to hit it just right for you to actually be able to see it and read it. I might do that in the future on the others. I don't know. This one's still for sale. And I was, uh, introductory price on this, $375 shipped with the watch. It's a good quality. Um, this is an Addy's Dive. It's a dive watch, 200 meter water resistance, uh, stainless steel case, screw in locking, uh, rear, rear cover, screw down locking crown, really good loom, NH35 movement, good quality watch. The price on these is gonna go up to about five bills with the watch. And I'll be making some boxes for them and everything else. These others are my personal, you know, I made this for myself, it's a beautiful watch, this Pagani. You see the power reserves on empty. Um, would I sell this? Yeah, I, you know, I might sell this if the price was right, I suppose. I put a uh, Patek, Patek, Patek Philippe uh, buckle on this. Let me get that to read for some reason. It doesn't want to focus. There we go. Pretty cool buckle. That buckle's probably worth some money. Of course, I've got the Luminor here, and I did the pass through on the Bund here. So let's see what the dimensions are on this. <clears throat> That's five millimeters thick, the Bund. So that, what that really is, it's like, a, oh, wait a second, let's see if we get that right, 4.5, 4.8. Um, that's the thickness of the bison hide with the thin layer of the uh, lining on it. Straps are lined as well. Cookie stitching on there on the keeper. This was the first one I ever made. I called this the Gladiator Watch Cup. We're talking 6 millimeters thick. This thing's massive. Now this is similar to what that guy was doing where he was stitching his strap directly to the bund. So, you know, this is just me wanting to compare what I've been doing on my own. These are my own designs. I mean, obviously I looked at other stuff, but I'm coming up with my own ideas here. And I wanted to compare that to a guy who's doing this commercially. This is this guy's business. This is what he's putting out. This is what you get for $300 or so from an established leather crafter.
cowhide, and this is what you get right now. At least one more left at 375 <laughs> with a watch. Super thick bucket. Now, this might seem stiff to you, but one of the things you want to do when you get one of these from me is do this. Pinch this leather like that. It becomes very, very supple, and you, you'll get this to conform to your wrist real easy. Uh, you know, this one here is just amazing. So let's go back to what else is going on here. It's a kooky video here today. I'm going to stop this now in case I decide to make this separate, but I think it's going to be all the same video. Let's see what they're doing out there. take another hour for them to get this in the hole. It's like me when I'm drunk. It's, it's funny because there's so much talking going on. You know, they got to do this. They have to communicate and make sure they're not going to make any mistakes. And they gotta, you know, thread that in, man. Cause they gotta, they, I guess they're gonna bring it up that way and then drop it in the hole that way. Cause they gotta clear all those power lines. They're really communication lines.
anything to estimate how deep that goes in the ground. I can see a white line on there that marks about six feet of depth. at least it's a good solid uh, six feet into the ground. see what else I can uh, find myself doing in the apartment. Again, that's all my personal collection. I did recently get this. I'll find the time to read it. Um, I went through a phase, a Billy the Kid phase. I got a bunch of books on Billy the Kid. And you know, I'm going to see if I can find something. I want to show you guys something that's pretty neat. It's a book I picked up. I think I was in New Mexico or something. And, uh, you know, hitting thrift stores and everything. And this guy uh, made these books. Now, I've seen other versions of this exact book. I think it's, like, self-published. And he really went all out on this, but he did the artwork. So this is a, a watercolor. You, know, you see this one here from 92. This was added to this book, which I think is pretty cool. I mean, it's really an amazing... I just, I think this is like, if you're into Billy the Kid and you've been buying books and reading about his history, to stumble upon something like this, Bravo Press... And I don't recall on this one, you know, what they're talking about as far as what they think um, the outcome was. It's just the, the history that they know. Every story pretty much from anybody who had anything to do with Billy. Um, we know that this tintype is incorrect. They didn't do it right here on the drawing. The, uh, in the actual photo, the King's Improvement, which is feeding the gun from the side, is seen here, which is the wrong side of the weapon. So we know that this picture of Billy was reversed. The negative was reversed. For a long time, people thought he was left-handed because of this picture. The reality is he was right-handed. But the prints that we all saw were in reverse. Uh, somebody didn't notice that until I think like the 1980s. So there's a lot of really interesting stuff in here. And I've gone, I've gone to Billy the Kid's grave and uh, all of that. And I'm of the belief that Billy the Kid uh, was not killed by Pat Garrett. I think there's plenty of evidence to support that now. <clears throat> I don't know if Brushy Bill was Billy the Kid. I think that's an interesting story. Um, I, I, I want to believe it. Uh, if you guys have seen Young Guns 1 and 2, it's interesting. I think that's one of the best movies on Billy the Kid. One of the problems I had with uh, old Westerns uh, back in the day, which I had to watch with my father. I mean, if there was a Western on the boob tube, we were watching it. You didn't have a choice, which was fine. But um, the problem with the old movies is, is that the actors portraying the characters in the films, especially in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, uh, and even into the 60s, 
were portrayed by old men. And in reality, th these guys were not even, they were still teenagers when they were doing this stuff. 20 years old was old for, for a, a gunfighting person at that time. Most of these guys did not live long. Most of them were dead before they were 30 years old. It was a dangerous lifestyle. So when you watch these old films, especially the black and white versions, and, you know, Billy the Kid's being portrayed by somebody who's 45 years old, it's, he, according to the historical record, he didn't even live that long. You know, not, not even close. I think he was 23 or something when that event happened. So uh, it always wigged me out. That's why I like Young Guns, because they had the young, hip actors of the time in that. There might be a Young Guns 3 coming out, which would be interesting. Anyhow, I think I'm just going to end this here. I could go on and on and on in this apartment and show you guys stuff, and maybe that'll be a, a thing that happens at some point. But this, I think, this is already getting kind of long. And I think I'm going to do something productive here today. Let's see what it ends up being. I don't know. I got to get back into the working out. That's why I mentioned that a minute ago. And I do have the pull-up bar here, and I've got my bands hanging here. And at some point, I'm going to do a video for you guys. I got a whole body workout that I do here. That's pretty impressive and fun, and it's efficient. I can get a full body pump while isolating specific muscle groups. Um, I can get a, a, a the kind of pump that you would get. It would take you like an hour in the gym. I could do in 10 minutes. Uh, it, that's how I'm able to maintain something. But that's it for that. I'll let you guys go. Uh, I hope your Saturday is fun, and you guys are doing something fun and productive. Uh, this is just a average L.A. Saturday morning. I'll catch you on the next one.